Welcome to this presentation on a component of winter injury, specifically freeze injury. Winter injury is comprised of three components, freeze injury, or as it is sometimes referred to as low temperature injury, winter desiccation, and diseases. Commonly the term winter kill is used to describe turf grass death during the winter but it is a poor term because it does not address the specific cause of the damage. With these injuries, there can occur to both warm and cool season turf grasses. Freeze injury occurs at temperatures at or below freezing. Freeze smothering and chilling injury are discussed in separate sections. A good starting point is to look at the process by which turf grass plants achieve freeze tolerance or low temperature tolerance as cold and winter conditions approach. Turf grass plants begin to harden off in the fall. Freeze or cold tolerance in turf grass plants are induced in response to low non-freezing temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This process is called cold acclimation, which occurs during the fall or early winter. Cold acclimation helps explain why a plant that is growing at a warm temperature then exposed to freezing is killed, while the same plant exposed to a cold acclimation period prior to a sub-freezing temperature survives. As the turf grass plants begin to acclimate or harden off, the plant cells begin to dehydrate. In other words, the water begins leaving the cells, which concentrates the solutes within the cell. The effect is to lower the freezing point within the cell. The water that has moved out of the cell will freeze in the presence of sub-freezing temperatures. If water were to rapidly freeze within the cell, death would occur. This is a pictorial representation of the water moving out of the cells and freezing in the intercellular spaces. As ice crystals form, more water is pulled out of the cell because of the water potential gradient that forms. The cell's plasma membrane is a critical in regulating water movement. I put this picture in for a quick review. This is a picture of a plant cell. As the plant begins to lose water as it begins to harden off, where will the water freeze first? I hope you chose C, the spaces between the cells. If it froze in A or B, this is internal to the cell and real damage would occur. Now, as water moves out of the plasma membrane, it contracts naturally. If damage to the membrane would occur, the result would be death, especially upon rehydration in late winter or early spring. The dehydration process is closely associated with the cold hardiness of turf grass plants. In studies done by Dr. James Beard and others, the maximum cold hardiness in turf grasses is reached from roughly December through early February in the Northern Hemisphere. Warm season turf grasses do not have the same cold hardiness as cool season turf grasses. A major limitation to warm season turf grass adaptation is a lack of tolerance to cold temperatures. Bermuda grass, which is common turf grass on golf courses and athletic fields, is susceptible to cold and would be considered to have poor cold hardiness. Cool season turf grasses have better cold tolerance as you would expect being adapted to cool regions of the world. Creeping bent grass and Kentucky bluegrass have good to excellent cold hardiness. The cool season turf grasses that we associate most with freeze injury is annual bluegrass and to a lesser extent perennial ryegrass. As winter and cold temperatures begin to break and warmer temperatures begin to arrive in late winter or early spring, the plant cells begin to rehydrate, breaking the acclimation state. As the water moves back into the cell from the intercellular spaces, normal cell functions resume. If damage had occurred to the plasma membrane through being punctured or ruptured, then the cell would be dead. There are three types of freeze injury associated with plants. The most common type occurs during freeze-thaw periods during late winter or early spring term expansion-induced lysis, and this is the one we primarily see on turf grasses in the United States. 
A common scenario, in this case annual bluegrass, is that as temperatures warm, the turf plants break their acclimated state. In other words, they begin to rehydrate. If excessive water is around the crown of, say, annual bluegrass, and a rapid drop in temperatures occurs below freezing, the plasma membrane can become ruptured or collapsed due to the part to the ice particles forming. Excessive water around the crown of the plant during these freeze-thaw cycles increases the severity of injury. In this picture, freeze injury has occurred to this annual bluegrass green. With a rapid drop in temperature, plant injury was made worse in areas where water had accumulated and froze. In this case, water had formed from the melting of snow and ice in late winter, and this annual bluegrass green had broken acclimation or dormancy, and the cells had rehydrated. Then, in the, this case, around the 1st of March, water refroze with the arrival of sub-freezing temperatures. Upon a rise in temperature and a subsequent thawing, freeze injury was apparent. This photograph was taken 10 days after the previous photograph. With warm season turf grasses like Bermuda grass, the arrival of warmer temperatures in late winter induces the plant to break dormancy, resulting in new lateral bud growth along with new stem and shoot growth. It is this point that the plant is most susceptible to low temperatures. In this case, the Bermuda grass broke dormancy early in the spring followed by a rapid drop in temperature after growth initiation. Here is injury that has occurred on a Bermuda grass home lawn in Oklahoma. Less common types of freeze injury that can occur are associated with physical changes and disruption of the plasma membrane through increased cell dehydration with decreasing temperatures. This type of injuries would be most likely associated with more extreme environmental conditions. While we had previously mentioned that creeping bent grass has excellent cold tolerance, here under extreme cold conditions found in the Rocky Mountains, this bent grass green suffered cold injury. To reduce the risk of freeze injury, establish more cold tolerant turf grass species and or cultivars. As was the case here after losing the creeping bent grass, they planted a more cold tolerant creeping bent grass cultivar. Improve both surface and subsurface drainage to reduce water accumulating around the plant. This will help reduce injury, especially to annual bluegrass during freeze thaw cycles when breaking dormancy. Eliminate or reduce shade. This photograph taken at a golf course in Norway shows the association of shade with freeze injury. The fairway that is shaded is injured, while the more open fairway in the background is uninjured. Low light conditions negatively affect the acclimation and hardening process during fall and early winter. Core and top dress to minimize thatch accumulation. A significant thatch layer is prone to wide temperature fluctuations that may make the turf more susceptible to freeze injury. A heavy late season top dressing is increased in popularity. The purpose is to provide some protection to the crown region like a blanket. With regard to fertilization, a balanced nutrient program is desired. On warm season turf grasses, potassium applications through the fall may enhance the cold tolerance of plants. Avoid promoting excessive growth going into the winter. On warm season turf grasses, raise the height of cut on Bermuda grass for the purpose of providing more protection to the crown or growing point. If freeze injury does occur, recovery can be slow. This photograph was taken in mid to late February in northwest Ohio. Notice that the damage has occurred in low-lying and poorly drained areas of the green. Also, tree shade has had an effect. This photograph is of the same green taken in mid-May. Difficulty arises in establishing injured turf during early spring when conditions are not favorable for growth. Severity of the injury often dictates the reestablishment practice. 
This is a fairway on a Wisconsin golf course along Lake Michigan. In large areas like fairways, the injured turf is often reseeded. Smaller areas might be plugged. On greens, seeding or siding often is required. This concludes its presentation on freeze injury.